Arlene's in her kitchen in uh, Upper Michigan. Yes. So we're kind of far flung today. <laughs> And if anyone is cooking along, please let us know that as well. Because if no one's cooking along, Arlene will just truck through everything because she's super speedy. <laughs> so as we go along here, um, if you have questions on any of the techniques or any of the ingredients, anything that's being covered in the class, you can put that in chat. Um, if it's something that needs to be answered quickly, I will interrupt Arlene and ask. But otherwise, Arlene will be checking the comments every, every now and then just to keep up with the questions and make sure that they get answered. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask everyone to remain muted so that we uh, lessen the background noise and distraction because that will pull the camera view away from Arlene and we don't want to miss what she's doing. So we'll just give it a few more minutes for participants to join us. I know we had a lot of uh, folks register kind of late, so I'm hopeful that everybody got the emails with all of the recipes. They were attached to the Eventbrite um, class, but sometimes we overlook those things. There is also another bonus recipe that you should be receiving an email. Um, if you haven't already this morning, it should be coming to you quickly. Um, with a new recipe that Arlene has added. And I've also included the link to Arlene's YouTube channel. So make sure you open that email and get the recipe in the YouTube channel because she's got videos for these recipes that will be downloaded soon. Unfortunately, YouTube's not cooperating, so they're not there yet today. But hopefully sometime today or Monday at the latest. <laughs> I haven't seen yet if anyone is cooking along with us, feel free to put that in the chat so we know. And if you're just enjoying the show, that's great too. In the meantime, if you have not checked out our website for Whole Foods Co-op for the other classes that we are offering, uh, coming up here, Arlene has one more in the month of June. So we have somebody who said they're cooking along with the Mexican and fish recipes. Arlene, are those two that you'll be able to do today? Uh, I'll be doing today the tuna recipe and the um, noodle salad, but I do have the chicken packet made you know, because I made them the day before yesterday, so I can show what the end result looks like. But that's okay. one that will be on the YouTube video. Okay. Perfect. So as I was saying, um, check out our website to see all the other classes that we have coming up. Arlene, remind me, what is your next class? Mediterranean uh, diet, next correct? Class, Mediterranean diet, yes. Perfect. Just looking at the date. And that class is going to be um, on, looks like June the 12th. Yes. Terrific. Saturday, June 12th. Same time, 9 a.m. <laughs> Yeah, I've been experimenting with uh, recording some of the recipes um, ahead of time because I can edit and I can add things and they're just much more professional. So that'll be a class where the recipes will, I'll be there and presenting the recipes recorded and then we can ask questions and do all other sorts of things because I find if I can record, I can do a recipe that normally takes 30 minutes, but I can condense it to 10. So in that, it won't be, you could cook along, but it'll be a shorter time. Uh, TV magic. <laughs> 
Yes. Editing really helps. It does. You know, like today I won't be editing, but um, you could get more recipes in a segment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So check out our classes at wholefoods.coop slash classes. So wholefoods.coop slash classes. So you can see the rest of the classes that we have planned through June. I myself have, have two cooking classes coming up. One is hearty and delicious salads. And the other one is exploring the fifth taste umami. So those are coming up in the next month and a half. And then we also have lots of wellness lectures, um, some yoga classes, Qigong classes, we're going to be adding Sundo classes this summer. So that's exciting, a new movement that we haven't done before. So we'll give it one more minute to see who else is going to join us this morning and then we'll get rolling. But I just wanna say thank you okay. again, everyone. Think, Go ahead. I think I'm gonna test um, sharing my screen. Okay. Hey. And we'll keep it like that because that's how we'll start. Perfect. All right. Well, it's 9.05, so we're going to get going. I want to say thank you again to everybody for joining us this morning. And Arlene, go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Good morning. I'm Arlene Coco, and I'm going to be your instructor today. I'm a full-time culinary instructor, and I also teach Serve Safe. Um, food safety for restaurants and I teach culinary academies. So it's a, it's a joy to be here on a Saturday morning to share some of the information that um, I have about easy weeknight dinners. So we'll just go ahead and start with the PowerPoint. Let's see here. So we can't talk about easy weeknight dinners without talking about meal planning. And meal planning is a critical part of making life easy during the week. So I always like to talk about eating healthy because um, it's important to have a healthy plate. I've been working on a health journey, so you may know, for about ooh, two years now. And in the last six months, I've managed to reduce my total cholesterol by 39 points in six months just by making adjustments to my diet. So I'm here to tell you that it does work and my doctor's thrilled and I'm going to keep going with it. So I always have to bring this element of health into my classes because it's really done a lot of, um, really done a lot for me. So the healthy eating plate, you want to have, you know, fruits and vegetables for sure is half your plate and half of your whole grains in a day, um, half of your grains in a day should be whole grains and healthy proteins, limiting, you know, saturated fat and those sorts of things. And this is from Harvard Medical School. They do lots of publications. They have a great website on eating healthy. So I recommend that. And um, just eating healthy oils, using olive oil. I use olive oil quite a bit and avocado oil to cook with. Avocado oil is great because it has a very high smoke point. So you can saute in it really high. And of course, olive oil is wonderful for that flavor for salads and other cold dishes. So one of the things that we want to do when you're doing uh, meal prep is you wanna write it down. You wanna pull out your menus and what you've done in the past and just kind of write down what you wanna do for the week. Um, it really helps you to commit to have a weekly meal plan. Now it can change because mine does all the time, but I like to sit down and try to do a week at a time and just kind of plan what we're gonna have. I get input from the family and from my husband, what do you wanna eat this week? Because I find that if you cook at home a lot, you have to make it interesting. Otherwise it's like, oh, okay, let's have pizza again, or let's have something Hi, Arlene. that we really don't. Yes. I'm really, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the um, images are really blurry. Is there a way you can um, 
I'm not sure um, if there's anything you can do to fix it. It might just be because your internet is um, slow. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm. How about show presenter view? Is that any better? Um, no, I don't think so. Let me, okay, let me try sharing it again. Okay. And seeing on a different screen. Is that better? Uh, whoa, nope, that's way worse. <laughs> wow. I think it's just because, okay. yeah, the internet is, is slow out by where you are. Let's see. Um, is it, do you want me to just skip to the cooking part or? Yeah, um, you... If, if you want, if you want to share the presentation with me, I can email it to everyone and then they can see it. Okay. At home. That sounds great. Okay, um, everyone, that's what we'll do then. We'll just, if... um, she'll share the, the presentation, uh, the PowerPoint with me and then you can all view it at a different time. If you still wanna go over all of the information, Arlene, I think it's valuable information and you have the ability to expound on it. So I think it's beneficial for us to, to go okay, ahead and- Okay, yep, I, go can, I have my notes and I have my notes in front of me, so I can certainly do that. Okay. So what I'd like for you to do though, Jen, is if you'll go to my YouTube channel and there's a video on there um, called Food Prep Like a Chef, Okay. And that one did download and we could share that Food as well. Like a chef. Okay, I can do yes. that. Okay. All right, you keep going and I'll get that done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Teamwork. So yeah, I have copies, uh, hard copies of my notes just in case of uh, something like this. So no worries. So Talking about meal planning, chopping the freezer and the pantry first is one of the most important things you can do. So every month or so, I take everything out of my freezer and inspect it for quality. How old is it? You know, are we going to eat it? And I put it in the rotation for the week because I try not to keep things more than three months in the freezer, right? For sure, seafood, you want to get out within three months. Um, if there are things that need to be used, they come out of the freezer and they go into the fridge. And you can avoid spending more money at the grocery store by shopping your own inventory first. You can save at least 30% on your grocery bill. Now, a good rule is um, stockpiling high volume items. And I read somewhere where you, if you dedicate 10% of your weekly food budget to stockpiling, that you can get a nice stockpile without breaking the bank. And I also suggest, for instance, for those jars of like pickle things in the fridge that kind of hang out there forever, <clears throat> you can make um, like an old fashioned supper club relish tray for dinner. Um, you can use those jars of pickle juice to make more pickled vegetables. I put lots of fresh cucumbers in with jalapenos and pickles. And um, <clears throat> you said for salad dressings or marinades. And so it's just some ideas to kind of use up your common things. So meal prepping is like we said, was a critical part and having an idea of what you wanna cook ahead of time and doing on your slow days, doing that on your slow days is key. So it's an organized way of preparing meals ahead of time so you don't have to cook a full meal every day. You take your time to plan, be inspired by resources. I go through my cookbooks, um, the internet, all sorts of resources. I also have a book in my, in fact, I'll grab it because it's right here in my kitchen. And it's just a binder and I just have it and it's called my latest bite. And it's just recipes that I've taken off of the internet or people are giving me or I've picked up at a class that I wanna make. So things that I wanna make in here and things that I've made are in here. And I find that 
if I go through it, it's inspiring to me to have um, these ideas right at hand. So I also double and triple my recipes because there's only two of us in our household. And I'm from the school of cook once, eat four times. So it doesn't take much more effort to cook for six than it does for two, right? So, and a lot of recipes out there are written for four and six people. So I just make the entire recipe and then I portion it and put it in um, containers and either freeze it or in the refrigerator. And one thing you have to, that I always tell my students is make sure you label and date every single thing that goes into your fridge that's a prepared food. And how long can you keep it? Well, the FDA says you can keep cooked food for seven days under 41 degrees or lower. So it's a good time to check your temperature in your refrigerator and make sure going into the summer, make sure that you are um, going at 41 degrees or lower because it will lengthen the time that your food stays fresh. The other thing is um, cooking every night can be tiring and if you see it is something that has to be done, right? I recommend getting a cycle going so you're not cooking three food groups every night. For instance, one night I'll cook a large pot of brown rice and then on the weekend, and because it's something that I have a hard time keeping up with during the week and we eat it so often. So some nights I only have to cook a protein and I have a salad and put a, a quick microwave green vegetable. My husband loves to eat raw pea pods and I think that's such a great, <laughs> great thing to just throw some raw pea pods on the plate and we just kind of munch them and they're really good and it's, we get our green vegetables in. The goal really for me is to cook one thing a day, right? To have a cycle going of other things that are ready and prepared to support me and um, only cook one, two at the most. And I also like to have a big salad every day as part of my new routine of getting leafy greens because leafy greens are really one of the best things that you can eat. And it, so it helps to round out the menu planning. So although I have a good solid plan weekly, I stay flexible in case we get a last minute invitation to friends or we decide, oh, we wanna go out because it's Friday night and take a break from the kitchen. And I just pick up where I left off on my schedule. It's no problem. And I like to look at the ads ahead of time on the store of the store that I wanna visit. Like I'll go online and look at the Aldi, look at the co-op, look at all the different ads that um, are there and see if there's anything I want to try new in the produce section that's on sale. And one of my friends who's a chef I was talking to the other day challenged me to every time I go to the grocery store to buy a new fruit or vegetable that I've never eaten before. So I, I challenged my students to do that too. Just try one thing, one small thing, you either, either raw or cook it or do research because you might like it and you might end up putting it in your rotation. So how I do my shopping, of course I shop at the co-op and I love shopping at the co-op, um, but I do shop at other stores too as well. And then I, I usually just start um, at the store that I usually go to and then I kind of end up at the co-op because the co-op has all my specialty items and I know that they're there and my bulk items and it has some great cheeses and things that I, that I buy. I kind of have my own list for each store. And, and if there's something I want to buy in bulk, I use the notes function on my phone to share with my family so we can work a list as things runs out. And this has been the one, a lifesaver for my husband and I because we'll just start a list for the grocery store and just add things on it and we're both adding things on and whoever goes to the store has the list. And so it's really interesting because you can edit it in real time. Like my husband will be driving to the store and I'll be putting things in on the way to the store that I forgot. And you could use a app too. I use ListEase for my professional, my classes. There's a free version and ListEase is great because you can have an inventory 
Um, you can, they can, uh, you can scan your receipts and keep track of your receipts to learn your prices. It's really a nice app and it is free. So unless you really like the grocery store with careful planning, you should be able to make it one trip a week. So now we're going to talk about food prepping and mise en place. Mise en place is French for put in place. And this is what happens every day in a professional kitchen. Lining up items you need with the equipment that you need to make a dish that helps things go faster. Now I have my favorite prepping knives, slices and prep trays for my organizing my prep. And I'll go through this in the video about deli containers and just different things that my favorite tools. Um, I like to prep best um, during a particular day of the week, but lots of folks who work Monday through Friday like to do it like on Saturday or Sunday. I can, if I'm really focused, I can knock out a week's worth of prep in about two hours, depending on what I'm making. Now, for sure, you can organize your fridge and have a good idea of what's going on for the week with a little planning. So um, do you want to uh, play the video now, Jim? Can you cue that up? Sure. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> Bear with me, everyone. That's okay. Okay. Everyone see that okay? Can you, I'm not hearing it. Is it. Are you able to hear it, Jen? Yes, I can hear it. Here, let me pause it. Do -do. So you need to stop sharing and then reshare from, share sound from computer. Oh, there it is. Okay, we'll start over everyone. Sorry about that. <laughs> How about that? Is that better? Okay. Were you able to hear it that time? Whoa! <laughs> no, not at all. Sorry. Not at all. Okay. Oh, no, don't be sorry. This is the first time I've ever shared from my screen. So it's going to be a second, everyone. Sorry about that. Do you want me to try to share it from mine? Jennifer, you need to unshare your screen. Okay, stop share. There we go. All right, and then pick share your screen again. On the okay. bottom left corner, you should see an option that says share your audio. Okay. Share sound, share. Thank you for the tips. I appreciate it. To my kitchen today. It's a beautiful day in the north. There we go. Oh, I I was it working? I can't <laughs> hear it. I'm, okay, good. I'm gonna go back to mute then. <laughs> and you wanna expand the video, please? Hi. Today I want to share with you some of my tricks and tips for food prep. Now, food prep is really critical for um, making sure that you have everything you need for your mise en place. And when your mise en place means put in place, okay? So it's important to have the proper tools. So that's what I'm going to go through today, some of my favorite tools. I like to keep all my tools together, actually, when I'm food prepping. See here, I have a case that I use just for my food prep materials. Now I also use it for my filming too, but it works great. 
to have all your food prep materials in one area. And one of the things I really like to have on hand too is a scale. I have this really nice nutrition fact scale by Nourish. And what it does is it will give you the calories for the food that you put in. There's a code you can put in for each food. And I think that's very handy if you are counting calories. The next thing I'd like to share with you is my, um, this is a blade, sort of like a little mandolin and it's from Pampered Chef, but you can pick things up anywhere. And by the way, I don't get any endorsements from any products that I like. And I really like it because it's got three different um, slides to where you can cut things three different uh, width or three different ways. So also, I like to have a lot of little bowls to chop and put my things in, especially if I'm making a big batch of soup or something and I want to have all my products ready to just dump in. I mean, my little bowls like this is the way that I do. So you can use plastic or re you know, reusable ones, but just having some smaller bowls is also helpful. The other thing I like is having measuring cups and lots of measuring devices. Um, scoops are really handy too to have because scoops, you can portion, this is a three ounce portion. If I'm making um, any sort of pork soup, I wanna measure, that's really good too. A nice, good, sturdy knife, just what you like, what feels good in your hand, what you can handle and use safely is always good and it's good to have a knife guard for your knife and by the way i always tell people invest as much as they can in their knives because a good knife will last you many many years so the other thing i like too is to have like little trays to put things in to prep these are like either breading trays um, or you could dip chocolate and things in them or you could just put your vegetables in here before you put them into a dish so, um, and one more thing for chopping that you might like is these kind of choppers. You know, my husband loves this kind of chopper to chop olives and nuts. Small jobs for that or something that you want to use for a garnish. I don't recommend them for like produce and onions, but like nuts and olives, this is really a good little tool. So you have everything prepped and now it's time to store it. So what I recommend for storage is if you're going to make something like a casserole or some entrees that you're going to freeze, having a glass dish that you can put a lid on like this is really helpful because then it can go right into the oven when you're ready because a lot of these will go from freezer to table that's Pyrex, so that's an investment, but it's really handy um, to have those meals in the freezer ready to go. Now there's also a version of this that you can get fairly easy um, for entrees that you want to freeze if you have something flat, breads or anything that you want to freeze. These are handy too. And I also like these kind of deli containers. Now these are heavy uh, deli containers. They're for, for freezers. I ordered these online and I really like these two sizes. Actually, I use the eight ounce. There's an eight ounce, this is a um, 16 ounce, and this is a 32 ounce. These are really good for soups and stews and liquids. And these are good for like side dishes if you want to prep side dish for two or What's sauce or something. A lettuce, a meat. Well, there you have it, some of my favorite tools. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the recipes. And your recipe books, figure out how you want to store your recipes, whether you want them in a notebook, on your device, um, and just use it as a storage area. I like to keep a notebook in the kitchen. I print things off of the internet, but I like to write on my um, notes because when I test things and I try things, I always make changes. So I really like to write on the notes. That's why I print mine out. But whatever works for you, just have a place where all your recipes are handy. Now, a couple of things to make your prepping a little easier 
is I always encourage cooks to have a large variety of spices on hand. At the co-op, you can go and buy for a month or two, you don't want to keep your spices more than six months. Have them organized in a way that you know where they are, you know which ones you have, whatever routine works for you. But having a lot of spices on hand gives you the ability to have a lot of different flavor profiles with the same items. Also a tip I want to tell you is to have a plan for your leftovers. And I wouldn't even call them leftovers. I would just be calling them previously cooked, right? Because if you're batch cooking, which I always recommend is to cook for six or eight and then break it down and put it into containers, um, just have a plan for that. Don't let them get lost in the back of the freezer. And also it's really good to pre-portion them as well because you can know exactly how many portions you have. I like to pre-portion soup in small containers like this. So when I have them, I know I can pull something out and bring it to work for lunch, or um, I'll just have that portion already portioned out for me. So batch cooking is great, and it's really nice to be able to have things ready. And when you're prepping also, prepping fresh vegetables for the week is a really good idea. A tip for that is to, when you get home from the store, wash all your vegetables at once, and put them in in your bags or containers that you want to put them in. And then I would say to start just chopping. I like to chop like a, one of these of braided carrots so I can throw them on salads all week long. I like to use these kind of containers for chopped broccoli or chopped um, cauliflower. I also do carrot sticks and celery sticks and put them in water and put them in these kind of containers. So it's easy for me to pull some things together, whether I'm doing a clean, sweet stir fry, or I'm making Buddha bowls, or I'm gonna make a soup. I have things chopped and pretty much ready to go. So those are my tips for food prep, and I hope that you enjoy this video. And if you want more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at ArlenePogo.com. Thanks. Awesome video. Thank you, Arlene. Thanks. All right. So let's get cooking. First recipe I'm going to make is going to be the seared tuna recipe. Because I find that I get questions a lot about how cooking fish because seafood is one of my specialties. And um, I love to cook these little tuna ahi tuna um, steaks. You can find them at most stores. And interesting thing about uh, tuna is that ahi tuna is really yellowfin tuna. And wild caught is the best. And it's really healthy to eat it. It's got lots of omega-3s and lots of great vitamins and it's relatively low in calories. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna take some avocado oil and I'm gonna pour a little bit on it just to, you can see here. And I'm actually going to move the screen down so you can see my pan, how about that? There we go. So I can work through here. And I, I like avocado oil, as I said before, it has really high smoke point, so it's really easy to cook with. So I have my pieces of fish here, and I'm going to take some, and I'm going to put my pan on medium. I'm going to take some toasted sesame seeds. Now I toasted these myself, but you can also buy them toasted. And black sesame seeds are really nice. I do a mix of black and, and white. So here I have them. I'm just gonna turn them over, no oil. You could put a little avocado oil in you if you like. And you could cook these from frozen. I cook them, these are kind of semi-frozen. And the key is that you want to cook them 
until you start to see the white edges around the bottom. I'm just gonna wash my plate, I'll be right back. And they'll cook fairly quickly. So if they're thawed, you would cook them probably two inches, two minutes on each side for rare. Uh, medium would be three to five minutes and well done would be five to eight. So, and if you're gonna cook them in the oven, you can follow the 10 minutes an inch roll at 400 degrees. We're gonna leave them just a little while longer, but there's, I'm starting to see that there's white um, part because it's cooking. I can also take it and sear each edge if you like to. So you can see that it just will cook on one side and then you want to flip it over. So that was like a couple of minutes because I'm going to do them rare. So I like mine really rare. And the thing about frozen fish is many times it's a fresher product than if you buy it in the store because most fish in the store is seven to ten days old. So I'm going to let it cook just a couple of more minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm going to put a lid on it and I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes. Now this technique, I think works really well with all sorts of frozen fish because like bar barramundi and all those exotic fish that you've seen in the restaurant world, they recommend cooking it from frozen right on a flat top grill, like walleye, those kind of thin fish. So for sure, if you have a thin fish, don't feel like that you have to thaw it to cook it. You can pull it out, it'll just take a little longer, depending on your method. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. You can see at the bottom, it's white, or actually it's brown. So I'm gonna take, take it off. Put it over here on the stove and we're going to let it sit and we'll go on to the sauce. So the sauce that I'm going to make is super, super easy and um, on the recipe it said wasabi, like four tablespoons of wasabi sauce. That's for, there's a wasabi sauce out there that is already mixed. This is, that would be for that. So if you're gonna use this kind of wasabi um, or prepare to straight wasabi, you would probably use about half as much. So I'm just gonna use, you really, it just depends on your taste. You know, you don't really need a recipe for this. It's just like a little sauce that you're gonna put on the um, fish. So you're gonna, and we're gonna add some sesame oil to it. So you like that nutty flavor. Gonna add soy sauce, but you can also add coconut aminos if you like that and if you use coconut aminos. But I think today I'm just gonna go with some soy, a couple of tablespoons. And soy, tablespoon, sesame seeds. Yep, that's all, that's all there is to it. So we're just gonna mix it up. Yeah, if it's, if 
you don't like wasabi that much, you can add more soy to it. But it's just gonna be like a little drizzle on the fish, sort of like a flavoring on the fish. And you could add ginger too. I really like the ginger paste from the um, Indian store. It's really nice. You could put that in if you like as well. I have a little bit of avocado oil here left. I'll throw that in. And we'll put that to the side. And what I like to do with this plate is also put it like on a bed of spinach. So we'll get that ready. So when it's ready, we can just slice it up. So this makes a great uh, lunch. You could have it for a light entree. You would prefer. And I also like to put avocado in mine. So I'm just gonna slice up a bit of avocado. Who doesn't like avocado with um, fish, right? It's a great match, especially with the soy. I just like take the spoon out. And I'm just gonna put them around. I try to eat at least a half avocado a day because it's a superfood and it really fills you up nicely. Okay, so what I also like to put is we'll sprinkle some sesame seeds for the garnish. And I like to use crispy onions. It's kind of makes in a nice little salad, right? So that's really easy to put together. And my fish is actually cooking pretty fast, so that's a good thing. So this would be a good time if we have any questions or any comments about what we learned so far, or I can just keep moving. Does anyone have any questions? You can go ahead and unmute at this time and ask. I just, I wonder if you chopped up the spinach or if you're leaving it with whole leaves. I leave it with whole leaves, but you could chop it in like ribbons. That would be really nice. Chiffonade. Did, did you have okay. any? Did you have any oil in the pan when you um, fried up the fish? No, I didn't. No. I put the oil on the fish and put that in and that took care of it. And notice I used a nonstick pan too. You know, this technique is actually bracing. It's really kind of crazy because you think bracing is with liquid, but it makes its own liquid. So you can see that the liquid comes out in it. And I do a chicken dish similar to this too, where I cook it skin side down in nonstick pan. And it's like chicken thighs with the skin and it fries and then I put the lid on and then it braises. It's really kind of neat. Thanks. Okay, so I think we could probably take one of these out. See how quick that is. Let's see. We'll try this one. Arlene, when you put the, the ahi tuna, was it frozen and you for raw frozen? Is it two to three minutes when the fish is frozen? Uh, mine had been, I pulled it out for about an hour before, okay. but I've done it frozen many times. And then it would be like maybe three minutes for raw, three to four. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I wanted to say I'm cooking along and I had a uh, frozen lake herring. I did not have tuna in my freezer, um, but uh -huh. it worked 
perfect with the frozen lake herring. Nice. I've nice to never know. tried this technique before. So yeah, thank you. Good. Oh, you're so welcome. So you can see it's perfectly rare, which is the way I like to eat it. I'm just, and you can arrange it on top. You kind of, you know, if you cook it often, because I cook this all the time, I keep things in my freezer, you get a feel for how long you can just kind of look at it and touch it. You notice that I touched it. And if it, if it's firm, the firmer it is, the more cooked it's going to be. Plus, I cooked it to where, oh, that's just a little too rare. All I do is I just take it off and I put it in the microwave for like 30 seconds and it cooks perfectly. You can cook fish in the microwave. Salmon wrapped in lettuce leaves cooks really well in the microwave. I learned that trick many years ago. So here we have just a drizzle of that wasabi on it. And that's it. So you saw how quick that was and we made it in real time. Arlene, one quick question. What did you do with the spinach sure. leaf, the avocado, and what else? Because I was trying to get um, your recipes printed, and they were not printing out, but I got it right now. But you use okay. spinach, avocado, and what else as your base? I use the um, French's onion rings, real okay. onions. Yes, yes. These are actually vegan. I didn't realize that. <laughs> um, Yes, that's only used. And then for the sauce was sesame oil, soy sauce, <clears throat> and um, sesame oil and soy sauce, right? And yeah. wasabi paste. And the wasabi. And wasabi paste. Yes, okay. thank you. All right. Thank you. Right. Uh, Arlene, that was awesome information about the salmon. I never knew that. That would be really fun to try. There is another comment. You could add black beans, red beans, and some white beans with that salad to get more protein in. Um, you could also add capers with the beans and some rice. Lovely. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Arlene, can yeah, you, that would be great. Can you um, tell me how you cook the salmon in the microwave with the lettuce? Do you put anything with it or? You know, I, <clears throat> I put it on a plate and I used um, like romaine, I think romaine or cabbage leaves. I've done it actually with cabbage too, the leaves. I just kind of wrap it up and then I put it in the plate and I cook it at 50% because I think 50% is like half power. And it's good if you have one that goes around, right? A table, because then it cooks evenly. And, and, and about how but long I also about how long would you um, I, <clears throat> well it really would depend on your microwave if you have a newer microwave it'd probably take about oh five to seven minutes um i would check it at that i'm one of these cooks that if i try something new i don't trust what people tell me or what i read i trust my eyes <laughs> and uh, my thermometer <laughs> So and you don't fish. You always want to to one forty. So you don't you put anything else. To one forty. You don't put anything else on the salmon. Just the leaf and the salmon. No dressing or anything or sauce. Usually or... when it comes, yeah. Usually when it comes out, I'll drizzle um, either some olive oil or salad dressing. I'm really big on using like oil and vinegars because there's so many beautiful like balsamic vinegar and olive oil would be lovely on it, chopped tomatoes. I mean, it's, it's just kind of a basic, but um, actually a chef <clears throat> did that, cooked that for me years ago, and I never forgot the, how delicious it was because there's something about salmon and fish in the microwave that, it, you know, you don't usually say I cook in a microwave, but there are certain things that you can cook, and I found that salmon for sure was one of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm always cooking salmon in the microwave, but I've never wrapped it in a, 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 a like a leaf. I usually just put soy sauce on it and uh, yeah. pepper, um, but that's that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, I think the, <clears throat> the lettuce just kind of keeps it from drying out. Right. It's okay, great. great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.
So next we're going to go on to our next recipe, and that's going to be the Asian noodle salad. And I've been cooking the rice sticks. I'm just going to drain them here, and then we'll talk about them. This recipe, if, if those of you who know me a long time, I had a restaurant called Coco's To Go downtown in Duluth for years. And this was a recipe that was on our, um, and I'll come up for air here. This is a recipe that was on our restaurant menu and our catering menu and people really loved it. And I was digging through some old files the other day and I came across and I said, you know, I'm gonna bring this back because these flavors are always good. The key ingredient is gonna be rice sticks. And I'm not sure, I'm sure, Jennifer, you probably sell rice sticks at the co-op. I'm not sure if it's this brand, but it doesn't really matter what um, brand it is, as long as it's rice sticks. And you can use bean thread, uh, mung bean threads too. The key is just want to make sure that you um, drain it really well. So you can see here, we'll go back down. I have it here and I'm going to drain it a little bit more. See, there's still water. And the reason why you want to drain it is because if you don't, your dressing, once you put all your ingredients in for the salad, it'll get very watery and you don't want that. So we'll start by prepping the vegetables. So I'm just going to chop a few vegetables here and put them in this bowl. All over here. I love the um, English cucumbers. I think they're really easy to use. The price really has come down. You don't really have to peel them. And I like the flavor. So I tend to use those exclusively. And I just gonna do like a barrel chop here and just slice them. As thin as I want, right? Okay. So we'll put that in the bowl. So I'm thinking about color here. Cucumbers in the salad always really um, marry well together. Next, we're gonna do some tomatoes and I'm using the little cherubs. You can use any type of uh, tomato. I like the smaller tomatoes just because I think they taste better and they're they're about the same size as the cucumbers. So my secret to salads is you wanna make sure if you have lots of little ingredients, they're all about the same size because then it makes it easier to get on your fork, right? The smaller it is, the easier it is to eat. Otherwise you're like um, going chop, chop, trying to poke it like a pitchfork. Okay, so we're gonna put some tomatoes. And then I have some scallions or green onions. A question I get a lot in class is whether or not, should I use the white and the green part? And the answer to that is maybe. It depends on what you're cooking. Like if you're going to use it just strictly as a garnish, then I would say use the green. You don't want to throw it away. You want to save it, right? And then you just want to cut off the ends if they're dry. You can also store these in water in your refrigerator and they'll store quite nicely. So I just like to do a rock chop and cut them as small as I can. 
they are kind of potent. This time of year, I also use ramps in this dish because it's the height of ramp season right now. We have a huge ramp patch near our house. Okay, so because I'm eating this cold, I'm going to save this green part for like a saute dish. This will be really nice in that. Or if I have like a making like a rumelade sauce or any kind of sauce where I want green onions in it because the acid in the sauce will break it down. I'm just going to use the green part. So I'll throw those in. I'm also going to use some cilantro. This dish was inspiring to me from my travels in Southeast Asia and Thailand and Malaysia. I've been to both of those countries and studied the cuisine for years and the flavors are amazing of the fresh dishes there because it's a very warm climate. So a lot of the food is eaten cold. Plus cooking fuel is extremely expensive. So folks just don't cook. And a lot of people just really don't cook at home a lot. Because in a lot of places in Thailand, it's cheaper to eat out, which I found. Because my I visited my niece there, who's Australian. And uh, she was there for two years for work project. And I would ask her a question about cooking. She said, no, no, Arlene, remember, in Thailand, I don't cook. In Australia, I cook every day. So it was kind of funny. <laughs> but um, so we're going to put the cilantro in. So we're just kind of making the base of the salad. Kind of like a lot of parts to it but it all goes together very well okay so now we have our rice sticks which i think look really nice they're nice and dry as you can see now when you use the mung bean threads they're thinner than this and they're a lot more slippery just keep that in mind that you'll be like pulling them apart. <laughs> so we're going to mix this up. Oh man, I wish you guys were here. You would love this smell, that fresh cilantro. Okay, now we're going to put the dressing. And the dressing is another one of those. You don't really need a recipe, but um, I'll give you one. So black pepper for sure. Lots of fresh cracked black pepper. Coarser the better. And the secret ingredient, fish sauce. My uh, good friend, Pat Williams, the chef, Thai chef, tells me that the three crab variety like this is the best kind. And I always, uh, default to pack because she knows a lot. She's taught me a lot about Thai cooking and she's taught me how much I don't know <laughs> actually about Thai cooking. Very humbling to cook with a Thai chef, believe me. So and then we're going to put some rice vinegar in and the recipe should have proper amounts but I'm just gonna because it's by taste. If you like rice vinegar for sure, go for it. And let's see, I think that's about it. Oh, sesame oil, that was the other thing. Sesame oil just kind of is like a fragrance. Do and you know some poison? Pardon? Poison? Poison? Poison is gonna go on a little later. And the sweet chili, I'm gonna put it on in just a minute. This is just kind of for the base of the salad. So kind of sesame oil, fish sauce, rice vinegar, kind of like a 
vinaigrette kind of thing. Okay. So this part you can make a day ahead if you like. We used to make huge trays of this, like really large 18 inch trays and sell them by the tray and put the chicken and you put, this works really well with tofu too. If you like, if you have tofu, like cooked tofu, roasted, make it pretty good size. And then you wanna get the goodies. You can also put fresh jalapenos in it if you like spicy. So there we have so the next part, we're going to put some chicken. And this recipe too will be on, on YouTube because I, may, I recorded it the other day. And I'm just going to slice it, Julianne, but you can put the whole thing if you like. on top and then you want to put some I put sweet chili sauce in it on it at this point just a drizzle and that really is nice because it soaks in to the um, chicken and it also soaks into the um, noodles. So the next thing I want to do, because you couldn't have Thai food without having chopped peanuts, right? So I'm going to just chop some dry, roasted, unsalted peanuts for the top as a garnish. I'll just give those a quick rough chop. Now you could do whole peanuts if you like that. And this would be great if you're doing tofu and you wanted a little extra protein. Peanuts would be a really nice addition. And I like the crunch. I love my salads to have like crunchy things in them. That's why I really enjoy the onion rings and the nuts and the, I like all the different textures. Okay, so then we're gonna see how easy this is. I mean, it's really, really fun, really easy. Okay. And then the next thing we're gonna do for it is we make a little dressing. And I think it's necessity for our inventory at the time we had hoisin sauce, right, that we kept in our pantry. And we really didn't um, have any other use for hoisin sauce except for maybe mushu or we would do something every once in a while that had hoisin. So we had to come up with some new dishes, right? Because we couldn't have anything in our kitchen that had was a unitasker. So we came up with this and it's just equal parts a poison sauce and rice vinegar. This hoisin really lasts a long time. I mean, it's got a lot of sugar in it. So, and keep it forever. So I came up with this, we came up with the salad dressing sort of drizzle, just to add some complexity to the dish, you could certainly serve it just like this without it, but this just adds a different level of flavor to it. So just, and we would just kind of, it'd be mostly for the rice sticks. You put it around. So that's a quick, once you have things prepped, like if you would prep 
like say rice sticks at the beginning of the week and the rice sticks are so easy to cook. You just boil the water, drop them in and let them sit for 10 minutes <clears throat> and then drain them. And the key is just um, draining them really well so they don't um, re release water, you know, and mix in with your other foods. So if you have some rice sticks prepped, you have some chicken breast prepped um, and you have some cucumbers chopped, tomatoes on hand, you can pull this together really quickly, really easy. And you don't have to use uh, rice sticks, you can use pasta if you like um, pasta and you have that on hand. So here are the two dishes that um, you can see that are really quick. They're kind of Asian inspired. It didn't turn out to be that way in the beginning, but um, the packet, the recipes that we sent of the chicken packet. Oh, I did, let me, I'll show you that because I did make that as well. Because here's how I prepped it. You know, I have it in a container. And I actually did them on the grill and foil. And then I took them out and I just put both of the things in, both of the chicken breasts with um, the peppers and the corn and the black beans in the container from the foil. And then I put extra salsa. And then when I go to reheat it, I can put it in the oven to reheat it with some cheese on top, or I can put it in the microwave. You know, if I move it for a, here to a baking pan, I can put it in the oven. Because when you reheat things, experts suggest that you reheat them the way that you cooked them. And since I cook these on the grill, my intention, I reheat a lot of things in the microwave because that just works for my lifestyle, so. So anyway, there you have it. Um, have, if you have any questions or anything about food prep or making your life easier, and if you have any tips, I'm always willing to learn because I cook every day and I'm always willing and looking for inspiration. So feel free to share. That was great. Thank you. I'm so glad you did the, the Thai noodle salad because I was actually considering doing that for my hearty noodle salad class. So. Oh, good. Yeah. You should. Yeah, it's really easy. Yeah. Well, you just did it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. We have a question. What is the difference between hoisin and plum sauce? Ah, you know, I don't think there's... Hmm, well, let's see. Hoisin is sugar, water, soybean, salt, sweet potato, cornstarch, sesame seeds, garlic, chili peppers. Uh, I think plum sauce is sweeter and it's not as much of the other spices in it, would be my guess, because this looks like it has chili pepper, spices, sesame seeds, and other things. This is what you would use in mushu wraps, because that's what we make with it too. And when you go to an Asian restaurant and order mushu, this is what you get on the side. And plum sauce, I think is for like egg rolls and maybe fried things, right? The crab rangoons that we love so much. <laughs> Or the cheese rangoons. Oh, somebody had the uh, the tuna salad, which was the lake herring salad, and said it turned out super. Thank you. Excellent. Wow, I'm so glad you tried that with lake herring because that's you know a really nice fish when you can get it. Did you get it locally, fresh? I um, got it locally frozen. So I- Oh, nice, even the, better. It was frozen and I just made one portion for myself. That was sort of my brunch this morning. And- Excellent. I was, No, it turned out it is the best 
recipe I've had for this lake herring. So I really thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Daphne, you, you learn one thing, right? It's worth the price of admission. <laughs> Arlene, what is a good flaky, non-smelly fish to use, like mm. walleye? Walleye's good. Um, you know, what we don't realize about walleye in our area is that it's all farm raised in Canada. That's why they're all uh -huh. the same five to seven or six to eight ounce fillets. Um, yes. But they're, I really like cod for a good um, affordable fish that's sustainable. Uh -huh. And I also like barramundi when I can get it. Yes. Yes. And because I'm, originally... I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I'm originally from India and we have a one, we have Baramundi there too. But the best fish that I like uh, when I was growing up is uh, it's called the Spanish salmon. But in ah. Hindi, yes, I don't know where you get that Spanish salmon. I have tried and tried and tried. I think in I Florida, wonder what the other name is for it is. Um, the, the Hindi name for it, I'll tell you in a minute. I'm I'm losing it for right now. Give me one second. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll put it on the chat. Sorry. I'll oh, that's it okay. It's called Ravas. R-A-W-A-S. Okay. Ravas. Wow. It's, I've never heard of that. It's one. absolutely phenomenal. If you eat that fish, you won't have any other. Ah, I felt like that in Bear Money in Australia. Delicious and sweet and flaky. And uh, we get it from the Arabian Sea uh, because I was born and brought up in Bombay, which is on the okay. west coast of India. And nice. That Ravas is spectacular. So it's probably comparable to our halibut, maybe. And um, yes, in a way. But uh, Ravas is so sweet. The, the meat is so flaky and sweet. Yeah. I would imagine mahi-mahi um, would be pretty similar. Really? Maybe, yeah. It's worth a try. I was just in San Diego for two weeks. I just got back last week, and it was halibut season there. And I ate halibut every day, every way <laughs> I could. Oh, it was the same, yes, very sweet. I had some in Denver. I was just in Denver a few, a week ago or so. Yes. Arlene, I was going to ask is uh, Barramundi, is that another uh, like name for sea bass? Uh, no, Barramundi is actually an Australian fish that is farmed here and, and what they used to do, and I'm not sure if they still do, is they used to ship the minnows over on um, by air to Boston and they would raise them there. I think now they're coming maybe straight from Australia and maybe freezing them on the boat. But I've never heard of any other word for barramundi. And then, man, I tell you, it's delicious because the fast food in Australia in the north, like Queensland area, is barramundi, french fries, and salad. That's the plate lunch everywhere. And it's fried, and it's delicious. I just wanted to say that the literal translation for barramundi in India is means 12 heads. Bara means 12. Huh. Mundi means head. 12 heads. Okay. That's wow. Huh. I've seen it at Sam's Club occasionally, but I think it's just like there's huge buys with these club stores that get it. I have never, I don't see it. What I do see um, is black grouper frozen. Do you have that at the co-op, Jen? Or do you have, I'm not sure I've, about your vision. No, unfortunately, I've never seen black grouper. Um, we do have halibut. Um, we do have cod. We typically have uh, mahi mahi. Okay. Uh, but yeah, lots of tilapia and um, lake lake trout, lake fish. Nice. And frozen, right? For the halibut and the cod. And yeah, unfortunately, it's frozen. No, no. 
<laughs> no, there's no shame in frozen fish. Believe me, the the techniques that they're freezing them right on the boat and the tender picks it up, it's fresher than getting it because we are so landlocked where we are. I used to be in the seafood business in my 20s and I'm telling you, frozen is the way to go if you are not eating Great Lakes fish because the preservation methods have come such a long way. That's really good to hear because that was one thing when we opened our second store, we were really considering doing a fresh meat and fish counter, but just could not uh, afford the space. No, no, I would never. Usually now, like at Mount Royal, Mount Royal actually has that black grouper and it's usually one of the less expensive fish because it's, I believe it's frozen and they slack it, which they thought, and but they say previously frozen, which is fine. And I order it from the butcher there frozen. And that's my tip. If you're going to, if you like a fish that's always previously frozen in your favorite market, ask them to sell you it frozen. So it's not froze thawed, froze thawed, you know, that decreases the quality of it. And then you just put it in your freezer and then when you want it, just pull it out and cook it. That's a great tip, I love that. Yeah, especially in Mount Royal, they'll do that for you. All right, does anyone else have anything they'd like to add or could you any just repeat other what, information? What, could you just repeat what she just said? I just missed that. Um, About sure, ordering, do, okay, sure. Um, what I said was if you shop at a, your favorite store and they have fresh, a fresh like black grouper and the case and the fresh case and there's a sign on it that says previously frozen that means they pulled it out of the freezer and thought it out just for that day or that two couple of days but my tip is to call them on the phone and say can you put aside three fillets of frozen black grouper for me and i'm going to come and pick it up and you could say wrap them individually um, if you like and then just put them in your freezer so you're skipping one of the thawing, you know, because if you're going to go shopping once a week and you want to eat fish twice a week, you can buy, you know, it frozen and just pull it out when you need it and cook it from frozen. I've always, I've always sort of been weird, uh, leery of like when it says previously frozen, I sort of think it's not as good. I, it, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think they're very careful about, the butchers are very careful about pulling out only what they sell. And I think they keep really good records. Um, uh -huh. But to avoid that, just ask to purchase it frozen. Right, okay, thanks. Yep. You have a friend who does that all the time there, that black grouper, because <laughs> she serves it at dinner parties quite a bit. Well, I hope that you um, enjoy the recipes and I'll make sure that you get them and then the YouTubes will be up in a day or two. Thank you for being so patient with my internet issues. I haven't, I've been teaching uh, for a year now online and this is the first time I've run across any kind of video issues or uploading. So I promise you to resolve them because I have some significant classes and uh, with other clients coming up. <laughs> so um, thank you for your patience because it's a work in progress, these classes and nothing is perfect, right? Oh, you did wonderfully early and don't worry about it. Everybody has these issues from time to time. I will say we signed up for Starlink, which is that new internet service from uh, Elon Musk. So. If that works as brilliantly ah. as they say it will, I'll let everybody know and then we can all have better internet. <laughs> Gosh, I hope so. Right. Well, thank you again, everybody. I want to remind you to go to Arlene's YouTube channel, which I included the link 
So you can check out the videos for the um, recipes that were not made in class today. And you can also see the videos that you pre-recorded for the other recipes. Um, a recording of this class will also be available uh, once it gets downloaded, which might be Monday, we'll see what happens. Um, so thank you again for your patience with our technical difficulties and for walking me through how to share my screen for the first time. That's always fun when we learn something new during these classes. Um, I'm excited to try that method for the um, tuna because I have some frozen tuna steaks in my freezer right now. So that'll be fun. But thank you again, everybody. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your Saturday. Take care and we'll see you at the next class. And thank you again, Arlene, you did great. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, could you give us